Hi, this is Sahara Foley, and this is where I left off at the last time. Well, I was wandering around like a fool because I got lost in, in these woods. It was a maze, and if you look at it, you can tell it was just a terrible maze. So, I should have just paused and started again, but I didn't. Instead, I just quit my videos. Anyway, this is where I realized where I made the mistake. So, we got this guy here. I thought this was the end of the trail, and it really wasn't. I had forgotten that there was another trail that went up this way. See, there it is, and I missed it, totally missed it. Sometimes you just get wrapped up in the battles and everything, and <laughs> you forget what's going on around you. So, just check this out. Oh. You enter a large, overgrown clearing. The crumbling ruins of a stone dome are in the middle. Nobody has tended to this grove in a very long time, and the locals have gradually been pilfering the stone to improve their own homes. In the middle of the crumbling dome, you can see a stone pylon, polished, carved with runes, and surprisingly resistant to both wear and the bird droppings that cover every other exposed surface. Yannick smiles, almost there, and then... Sincha steps out from behind the pylon. Wydalin rebels, expertly concealed, leave the brush. If it is an ambush, though it is an ambush, though hardly an unexpected one. No, he's been stopping this all the way along. Sincha's dark garb is torn and stained with his blood, but the Shadow Walker still has plenty of fight in him. He points his blade at you. Here is your goal, hands. Let us have a final test. How strong are Abaddon's servants? I really am not liking him in this game, I tell you that. I, I kind of didn't like him in the first one because he was kind of getting more arrogant and pompous as we went along. I guess I walked right into them, didn't I? <laughs> I didn't even realize it. So where is he at? Here he is. Do I have, can I get to him? I know she can. Oops. I'm not too concerned about them. He can get rid of them. Let's see here. Do battle frenzy. She can also do battle frenzy. He's just going to focus on these down here. Sencha reels back under the force of your attacks. He mutters, I had hoped to save this, but he is wearing a silver amulet around his neck. He touches it and mutters a word of command. It crumbles into dust. A moment later, a shade appears next to him. The air around it grows icy cold. He's got a lot of tricks up his sleeve, doesn't he? Okay, so what do we, where's he at? That's in good shade. Where did he go? Oh, he's clear over there. Hmm. Running from the fight again. Of course, that's what Shadow Walkers do. They are not. Um, and I'm stunned, huh? Okay. Shadow Walkers don't like fighting hand on. Stunned. You can come over here. Can I move? Nope. Damn it. Almost got him. Ooh, now she can. Oh, he should be dead. Sincha has one final surprise in his arsenal of tricks. He surrenders. He drops to one knee, lowers his blade, and looks at you and looks you in the eye. I yield. The field is yours. I will surrender my blade and treasure and treasure to you if you will but let me flee. Really? See, he's, he is just a coward. What trickery is this? Yeah, I don't trust him. Sincha bows his head. No trickery. I know when I am beaten, I ask only to be allowed to yield with honor. 
and you can abandon your commission now? Yes, it is allowed to a free walker who is defeated and has no hope of success. The cost to my career will be considerable. However, my future clients will understand when I point out that I lost to Avedon. Well, two of them are Avedon, but I'm just a pack soldier and I'm kicking your butt. <laughs> so this is my decision to make? Yes, my treasure for my life. Though in general, etiquette demands that you do not chop down a surrendered prisoner. Yannick nods agreement. My hands are stained with enough blood. I would rather spare one life if I can. He's such a wimp. I don't know. I mean, he's a good fighter. But he's, he's a wimp. Kalita replies, He raised a blade against hands of Abaddon. He could have fled at any time. No, Abaddon cannot spare such an offense for all our sakes. They turn to you, hoping you will settle the impasse. Well, I agree with Kalida. He could have left at any time, but he kept coming after us. He knew he was, we were going to beat him. I mean, but no, he was too arrogant. And it's time for you to die. He actually was working for the Taiwan Empire in Avedon 1. Sneaky, sneaky. No, he tried to kill us. He needs to pay. Both hands not agreement. In an instant, Sinsha leaps to his feet, blade in hand. Then I, I die, but bravely, with honor. He salutes you and charges. Well, it's the first time you've been brave and honorable, then. <laughs> You're dead. Bye. Yep. Sinsha slumps to the ground, grievously wounded. He reaches into his pouch, grasping for a final trick that can save him. The bag is empty. Hope lost, he lies back and closes his eyes. And then he is gone. Kalita nods. We have done the right thing. We must show that the days of butchering hands are done. She helps you liberate the pouch of gold coins he received from the Titan. Then you are alone in the clearing, facing the pylon. At last, Yannick says, I am ready to activate it. It will call to Abaddon, and when your message is heard, the way home will open. So all I have to do is click on the portal to use it. Okay. And our, our, all of our... Yep, they are gone. Okay, so let's see what he dropped. Iron, which we already have. A Raber's Cutlass, and it's better than one I have. Acid for two turns. Well, mine does acid for two turns also, but look, at it's 22 over... Yeah, this is just a better weapon for me. So you're going to go in there. And now that I got rid of the iron spear, I can use a shield. And he's got a steel razor bolt, which is better than my iron one. Ooh, I'm really going to kick butt now. Okay. I think we're done there. Okay, let's see what's going on. Let's look around, see if there's any more loot. What's up over here? Nothing. Nothing, honey. Just wandering. Okay, there's nothing to really see. So here we are. The pylon for Abaddon. So what happens when we touch it? Okay. You approach the pylon and take a look at the ruins covering it. They are obscure, complex, and carry no meaning to you. Fortunately, Yannick is there to help. He walks up, gently pushes you aside, and inspects the ruins. He touches three of them, seemingly at random, while humming. Nothing happens. He tries again. Nothing happens. I hope someone at Abaddon is paying attention. They must, after one of their own portals, they must, they must alter one of their own portals too, and then at last the pylon comes to life. It starts to glow. Little wisps of light rise from it. You hear a deep hum. Yannick drags you back from the pylon. Someone is coming through. You should not be standing where they appear, or you may find important parts of your body no longer exist. Well, this is interesting. So somebody is coming through? Well, I didn't expect that. I was expecting this to end up going to Avedon. Pilot begins to life. It starts to glow a little. Bit. Hmm, interesting. Who's coming through? Two things happen simultaneously. First, you hear a commotion to the east. Deep shouting combined with something huge crashing through the underbrush. Rebel reinforcements are arriving, trapping you in the grove to the east. So they're coming from this direction. Okay. 
And then two people appear by the pylon, Hansa Abaddon, one a young man of the Weirdolin, a shaman with an odd star on his cheek, the other a shadow walker. Okay. Someone is coming. One moment. So, the shaman turns to the shadow walker. Yasheta, anything of note? Yasheta replies, only those who come, loudly. She moves to inspect the clearing as the shaman waits for you to approach. The shaman turns back to you, unconcerned by whoever is approaching. Kalita, Yannick, good meeting. I am pleased that you are well. And you? You introduce yourself. Greetings, Sahara. I am Dedrick, shaman in hand of Abaddon. From this close, you can see the scar on his cheek. Clearly, it's an odd symbol unfamiliar to you. We need to get to Abaddon. I have to report to Redbeard. That is, yep, yeah, that's my whole quest is to report to Redbeard. Do you? You outsiders are so eager to face our master. Dedrick looks at the bodies littering the clearing, but it does appear that things have been happening here. Vichetta and I answered your call as quickly as we could. Once the portal was active, we came through to see if we were needed. Is the pylon working now? Oh, yes. We can return to Abaddon soon. First, though, we will see who is coming. He takes a deep breath. And I would breathe the, the air of my homeland. Oh, the Wydaland. It has been too long. This isn't really part of the Wydaland, is it? Why have you been away? What is that scar on your face? What do we do now? I, we're, we're under attack. <laughs> what do we do now? As you ask the question, the Shadow Walker Yosheta walks back toward your group. You turn to see what she has to say, but she only gives Dietrich a brief nod. He replies, no surprises, yes? Then we get answers. Our guests are coming now. The crashing sounds have finally reached you. A band of huge, filthy humanoids lumbers into the clearing. You will eventually be able to bring Dietrich into your group. Shamans can summon pets or fire for you, heal and bless their allies and assault their enemies with a variety of damage spells. Yay, so I'm going to have a shaman. Okay. So what is this? There are five of them, four orgs, and behind them, Goris, the hunter. They charge into the clearing, winded by their mad run here. They barely even take the time to look at you before Goris roars. Drop blades, little humans. You trapped. You ours now. Surrender. You think you can beat hands of Abaddon? Goris laughs. Little thing, I can kill, kill. Wait, did you say Abaddon? He looks back at the patch, at the path he came down. Abaddon. Abaddon is here. He starts to experience an unfamiliar emotion, worry. You sue a scout named Rainer and you will pay for it. That's right, Abaddon, and you're going to pay for your crimes. You sue a scout named Rainer and you will pay for it. Gorus grows even more confused. Scout? Sue Scout? I sue no. Wait. Scout? He starts to laugh. What is it? Is he surprised? You're Scout. You get a surprise soon. Oh, no, don't tell me he ain't being a rebel. While you talk, the hands start to spread out. The shadow slips into the shadows, wa watching for a good moment to attack. What do you think, hands? The four hands remain silent. Their desire to do battle with the titan now is not high. Leave, Gorus. This is your last chance. Gorus nods. I need no orders. I go, but he says to the orgs, kill them. The orgs aren't pleased by this, but they know they have no choice but obey their master. They step forward to block the way as the titan moves to safety. So he was meant to leave, which is good because there's more to the quest. All right, so we still have our own party members, and I never leveled them up, so that's not going to... All right. And she is... Let's get her over here. He's going to go there. See, 
I just, something a pet just doesn't do much to me, but I'm going to go ahead and do a turret. Let's get rid of this guy. Now, are you going to fight or just sit there? The orgs are gone. Goris fled. Once again, the clearing is secured. Detrick hangs his staff from a leather strap over his shoulder. Shoulder. I think the path is clear, Sahara. Touch the pylon to return. There is much that Redbeard needs to hear. I hope to see you again on the other side. Detrick walks to the pylon. Yoshetta does too. However, when she gets there, she stops and turns. She wants to talk to you. Did they drop anything good? Steel broadsword. And I've got a... Okay. That for two turns. 26 to 7. Oh, this is even better than one I had. Okay, I'm going to take this one. And I'm going to give this one to her. She's got a... Is that even better? Okay. 25, 24. No. But she's got is better. She also damages targets no, near her, too, so no, it's not any better. Oops. Okay. When you get close to the pylon, Yo Yoshetta nods to you. You nod back. Hmm. She eventually breaks the awkward silence that follows. Proper introduction. I am pleased to meet you, Sahara. I am Yos Yoshetta. You are a hand? Yes. Thank you for your help. She nods. Well, she doesn't talk a lot, does she? Are we going back to Abaddon? Yes, but first, I wanted to see you. See me? Is last moment for you. Last moment. Tell you to enjoy it. Take breath. Feel breeze. The last moment before what? Is last moment for you. Last moment. Tell you to enjoy it. Take breath. Feel breeze. The last moment before what? You go to Abaddon now. When Gaze of Abaddon falls upon you, all changes. Its first is last moment of your old life. Wish someone had told me to enjoy mine. Now I tell you. I suppose in a way that's true. Once you become a hand, your life is never the same after that. So I'm going to become a hand. You don't like being a hand? Abaddon? Abaddon is... My thoughts do not matter. The world moves on. How did you become a hand? I was chosen. Life had its way with me since I was taken. Oh, I'm sorry. Life had its way with me and I was taken. More than that, perhaps we can call, per, more, perhaps we can talk later in Abaddon. Take a quiet moment. You stand silently with Yoshetta, enjoying the day, the breeze, the fresh, cool air. Kaleida fidgets nervously, but Yannick seems to enjoy it. Yoshetta nods. I wish you good fortune, Sahara. I hope Redbeard is merciful. And before you can ask what she means, she turns and touches the pylon and she is gone. All that remains for you, all that remains is for you to follow. You'll eventually be able to bring Yoshetta into your group. Shadow walkers can damage. Okay. I figured they were both going to be in my party eventually. That's why they're there. So, what do you mean by Redbeard being merciful? I think... I think the downfall of Abaddon changed him too. Maybe he became less trusting. Well, he had to after Miranda betrayed everybody. Okay, here we go. You approach the ruined pylon. It seems that you are allowed, it senses that you are allowed to enter Abaddon. The glowing stone sends out a wave of restoring energy, erasing your fatigue in an instant. Return to this pylon to rest. You can also touch it to be instantly returned to Abaddon. Nope, return to Abaddon. Here we go. You touch the pylon. In an instant, you are surrounded by a cloud of energy. In one birded gamma's moment, 
I know what they're trying to say, vertigo, but that's a weird word. It pulls you the many miles to Abaddon. Here we go, we're in Abaddon. Oh, these are the portals that they have in um, Avernum. Because in Avaddon 1, they were just a pylon. This is now a portal. Interesting. Okay. Interesting, interesting, what we got here. Contestant Lands Portal. I mean, it's the same spider web as the developer, so I mean, they can use their same graphics for whatever, but you stumble away from the portal. See, now they are not with me anymore. See how they're grayed out? You stumble away from the portal, disoriented by taking a journey of hundreds of miles in an instant. You find yourself in one of the towers of Abaddon. The portal to the Contestant Lands is behind you. The hands who helped you get here have already walked off, eager to make their reports. You are left alone with two guards. One of them says, Hart, Protus is waiting for you. Down the hall to the west and on the left. So I need to go west and then left. After everything you've heard about the destruction of Abaddon, you find that the building is incredibly huge and lovely. Only a few of the walls are still cracked. The blood stains have been mostly mopped up and the charred smells and the charred smell is faint in the air so how long so long after the downfall of Abaddon or the attack on Abaddon does this take hmm to the west and then left and left is this way that is odd okay we got a gate here we cannot get into that was a lot of Abaddon too a lot of stuff. Okay, well, they said to the west and then left, which I did. Hmm. Who's that? Does that say anything? Nope. Can't take. There's nobody there. Well, let me take it. Yes, I did. <laughs> I'll probably get in trouble for it. Oh, close it so they know I'm not stealing. Okay. Nothing to see. Keep moving. Oh, where am I supposed to go? And to the left. They actually had rooms before. Now they don't. Okay. Open the door. So do I have a quest up here now? Report to Abaddon. Mineral deal. Hmm. This book is about Hanbar, Hanbar's Council. Okay, and I've got points for reading it. It's got a lot of coins here. Close the door. And another one. What is this to? I need your report. Oh, okay. There is a large office on the south end of the barracks. There is a middle-aged man in well-tailored clothes sitting at the desk. The symbol of Abaddon has been embroidered on his shoulders in gold thread. He says, I am Hart Protes. Redbeard has given me the honor of administering things on the main floor while he does the things he does above. You are Sahara, yes? You have disturbing news to report from the contested lands. Come and speak with me, then we can decide what to do with you. Okay. You are Sahara. I need your report. Let's look in your desk. Ah, just pens and paper. Okay. Mm. Oh no. Does he tr look trustworthy? Because Miranda did. Hard protest is sitting at a desk loaded with scrolls, reports, and maps. The unsteady pile testifying to his importance here. He doesn't rise when you approach. He leans back in his, in his chair and steeples his fingers under his chin, which... He must do that a lot. I am ready for your report, Sahara. I am the one who reserves and who receives and evaluates important reports from the field. Redbeard has given me the honor of declaring me a heart. There is a long pause while he watches you, waiting for you to ask what a heart is. How interesting. What is that? Protus is pleased that you asked. 
The servants of Abaddon are hands, eyes, and hearts. Eyes gather information, hands carry out Redbeard's will, and hearts are of those he has chosen to be his trusted advisors. But I don't want to brag. I am but a humble servant of Abaddon. Now I am ready. Ready? He reaches for a pen and a scrap of paper with a blank area in the corner. For your report. Contested lands. Yes? What is happening there? I was told I would be reporting to Redbeard. Protus lets out an amused little cough. For oh, everyone thinks themselves worthy to speak with Redbeard. But the mighty keeper of Abaddon is very busy. That is why he has hearts to determine what merits his time. Tell me a report and I will decide whether it merits his direct attention. So do I want to be defiant and say no, I'm only going to speak to Redbeard? I can't trust anybody here. Hmm. I mean, yes, I'm a so so soldier of the pact, but I've never been here before. To hear what I have to say, the contested lands. I will give my report to Redbeard and nobody else. Heart protest starts to snap out a response. Then he sees the resolve in your eyes. He sighs, soldiers. You think stabbing the, the odd person makes you immune to the rules? Fine. You can see Redbeard. How do I get to him? By receiving a rare honor. He gives you a necklace. A delicate silver chain with a yellow crystal dangling from it. This will give you passage through some of the less important gates. Guard that pass closely. Of course, you will need to return it when you, all, when you resume your duties back to Rock Ridge Keep. And where is Redbeard? The stairway to Redbeard's tower is in the exact center of the main fortress. Go west from here to find the guest quarters. I have already asked Polis to set aside a modest apartment for you. Redbeard's tower is just to the north of that. Don't spend much time freshening up. Redbeard needs to hear all of this immediately. Now, excuse me, I need to do some immediate research on the contested lands. He waves you off. Hmm. See, I, I think I have every right not to trust him up front. Oh, here's another one here. This book is about the far lands. Okay. So, oops, where am I going? This is so much of, of this is just wandering around until you know where everything's at here. This is the barracks and Hmm. You don't have the key and the lock is too complicated to pick. You are surprised to find a young shaman, Dedrick, Didrick, in the training room. One might expect to find a shaman in a garden or something, but he's working on his up his sweat, practicing with his javelins. Dedrick is Dedrick is eager to take a break from his practice. He holds some ice on the throwing arm and sits on a bench with you, making conversation. You notice that he tends to sit so that that the tattoo on his face is toward the wall, obscuring it from view. Tell me where you are from. The Wadalin, one of the southern tribes. We lived and ran in a deep wood. I was a young shaman there, rising quickly. It was a good youth. I love to remember it. That was before all of this darkness. Are your people rebellion now? Thankfully, no. My tribe is just outside the rebel area. This is a great blessing. I do not have to wait for the inevitable news of the destruction of my home and my family. What do you think of the rebels? They must be crushed. They will be crushed. I sympathize with their complaints, but the pact must be kept intact. You sympathize? Submitting to the dictates of Hanbar's council has cost us much. The privacy of our sacred rituals, land we believe is ours. The ability to, to charge tolls on roads through lands we control, even if the pact has declared them to be free roads. We in the Wildelim build these costs every day. Our only difference is in whether or not the price is too high. The cost is worth what the pact provides security and prosperity. Those costs seem high, only do you think the costs to the Wildelim are worth being in the pact? Once I was sure it was, now I don't know. 
That's the problem with listening to the other side's opinions. Sometimes you hear them, sometimes you hear them, he laughs. You are practicing with the javelin? I do, sometimes. We shamans become so attuned to the power of nature that we forget to tend to our more mundane, mundane powers. I'd like to know more about your tattoo. Dutrick looks down and sighs. I am tired, Sahara, and I do not know you. Carrying it is a constant burden. Perhaps we can discuss it in time. Okay. And who is this guy? Han. Han. Ray. Whatever. Ray. The master of Abaddon's training hall is an old Hoaklandian Ho Ho woman. She uses a cane to circle slowly around the hall. The cane also serves to deliver painful punishment to anyone attacking, I'm sorry, slacking off or showing poor form. She eventually cycles around to you. I am Han Katie, she says, and this is my domain. I am here to teach the younger hands to help them survive all that are hunting us. How long have you been trained? How long have you trained here? 30 years. I was told to be a shadow walker, but I had the benefit of knowledge. It was gained by decades surviving in my work. Too old, really? The most important skills for a shadow walker, knowing one's own capabilities and seeing reality as it exists. Why did you come to Abaddon? To aid the pact, it is how I choose to spend all of my declining years. What happened to your leg? I am not shy about it. I am not shy about answering to servants of Abaddon. Hmm. <laughs> Can you train me? No, not until you are a servant here, hand, eye, or heart. I figure that. I've got to become something important to them. I'm on guard. Okay, so I need to find my quarters. Let's go down here. That's the training hall. That's heart. Pro, pro, okay, what does this say? Oh, something came up. There is a steward wandering among the offices and quarters of the hands and hearts. He is an aging man, crisply dressed, the very picture of dignity. He gives you a little bow. I welcome you, honored visitor to Abaddon. I am Polis. I will serve you when you desire, tend to your needs, deliver messages, whatever it takes to ease your mind. Where are you from? I am from the Taiwan Empire. Mm, really? I have been honored with this posting, and I have been here for over 20 years through both good and very troubled times. The Taiwan Empire, isn't that one of the far lands? The Taiwan Empire is the enemy of the pact, but I do not concern myself with politics. I exist to provide quality service. I've heard that before from other people. <laughs> Oops. Um, do you know anything about the troubles Abaddon has been facing? It has been a dark, bloody time. In the attack two years ago, I lost friends, both agents and servants. Some of the servants I had known since childhood. He managed, he manages to maintain his stoic resolve, but only with visible effort. I have another question. What do you do here? I take care of the distracting needs of the hands, eyes, and heart so that they can focus on their work. How can you help me? I can provide food, clean linens, light, whatever your day-to-day -day needs require. There are services. These services are extended both to agents of Abaddon and our honored guests. Um, well, I don't need anything else. All right, I will be here if you need me. So my quarters must be here somewhere. I am from the... Um, is it the okay, what happened there? Okay. So my quarters must be here somewhere. What does it say? Does it say North Bedroom Yannick, South Bedroom Sahara? Okay. So this is Yannick's bedroom. Is he in here? Oh, this is a bigger bedroom. He's not in here though. Okay. You find that the servants of Abaddon have already set up quarters for you. Their efficiency is truly admi admirable. 
The butler polis always lurks in the hallway outside waiting to offer advice or deliver messages. He makes sure to approach you and say, Welcome, Sahara. I will make sure that you always have clean towels and light spree blankets. Also, if anyone leaves a message for you, you can find out about it from me. Yeah, he is a good messenger, that's for sure. This is a place, oops, where I can... The Sack of Abaddon. This entry here... This book about the Sack of Abaddon. Well, that's interesting. I haven't really found any that I was interested in reading, but... Okay. The Sack of Abaddon. Two years ago, in Psycho, the unthinkable occurred. Okay. April. All right. So it's just basically going over what happened. For people who've never done the first quest or the first book. Okay. So this is all my stuff. I can put things in here. All right. But I need to find red beard. So I need to find. Do you need anything? Okay. His he is at the center of report to Abaddon. This must be it. Not this way. Okay. Didrick South bedroom. North is Detrick, south is Kalida. Kalida. Is she in here too? Nope, she's not here either. Okay. This book is about eyes, hands, and hearts. Okay. Oh, this is the end too. Is he in here? Well, he's got a small bedroom. Interesting. Where does this go? Oh, what is this to? Stairs to cell tower. Okay. We don't want to go to the cell tower. We want to go. Ha, ah, here we are. You are at the bottom of a tall, elegant stairway, a marble spiral raising up through the air and through a hole in the ceiling. It leads to Redbeard's tower where the Infamous protector of the pact resides. Though most of the wreckage of the attack on Avedon has been cleared away, the debris and charring here has been left behind. A constant reminder in the heart of Avedon of what is at stake. Okay. Here we go up to meet the red beard. I'm curious to see if he's going to be the same. Oh, look at they've got turrets here. They never had turrets before. Interesting. This is the first floor of Redbeard's Tower, where the Keeper of Abaddon meets with the hands, eyes, and hearts, as well as the assorted diplomats, supplicants, and couriers who come to ask for help or mercy. It is far quieter up here than downstairs, being a loud mouth who irritates Redbeard can be very dangerous. His hall is to the east. Several people wait patiently outside his chambers, hoping that he will decide to spend a few minutes hearing petitions. He usually doesn't, especially in these chaotic times, but they wait anyway for days, for day after day. All right, now we're just, we're not going to explore. So who is this? Lord Burp. Oh, he's in... He's a wretch. Hmm. Okay. Sometimes you can get quests from these people. I'm no politician. Let's talk to her. Alexia, there is a woman of the Taiwan Empire waiting patiently on this bench. She, sh she sits ramrod straight, the very picture of dignity, and her clothes are pressed and in immaculately clean. She motions for you to sit with her. Even though she is a farlander, she is eager to deal with any servant of Abaddon she can. Greetings, I am Phylexia. I have come far to Abaddon to get help from my clan. Hmm. Why are you here? For the same reason so many come. I wish to find a hand to take up a cause. Payment will be provided, of course. What do you need? I am afraid I need the services of a hand at Abaddon who travels to the Taiwan Empire. Are you such a hand? You are forced to say that you aren't. Then my vigil continues. My apologies. And I kind of figured that was going to happen. Okay. Since I am not a hand. See another turret. 
freezing turret. So one was a burning turret, these are freezing turrets. Hmm, this is just a piece of machinery, it can't communicate at all. No, I didn't think it would. Tower guard, only the most serious, loyal, muscular guards are trusted to serve in Redbeard's tower. They are not supposed to acknowledge anyone who walks by them, and they don't. Okay, and who are all these people wandering around here? You step into Redbeard's audience chamber, the place where the Keeper of Avedon greets outsiders, and for the first time, you lay eyes on the Master of the Black Fortress, the man who has kept Leonis trembling in fear since decades before you were born. For a moment, you aren't sure what is frightening. He is a huge man, immaculately dressed, but he is also pale and haggard. There are bags under his eyes, and his tunic shows signs of much recent wine consumption. Oh, no, that's not good. When you enter, he sits down in a goblet, wipes his mouth with his sleeves, grins, and waves you forward. What? Who is it? The soldier from the contested lands? Protus says you have a report to give. Step up and talk. Then I'll see what use I can make of you. So he's turned into an alcoholic. That's not good. I know of you. Let's go over here. What does this say? This book is about report. Dalus. Dalus is the one that started everything. This is the heart of Abaddon. Where is... Okay. Let's talk to Redbeard. As you walk across the hall to meet Redbeard, an astonishing transformation happens. His eyes clear. He straightens up. All signs of fatigue fade. When you reach him, he is Redbeard once again. The legendary Beard, ageless master of Abaddon, master of the Black Fortress for over 30 years. For over 50 years, though he doesn't look a day over 30. A man with the power to send anyone in Leonis to their death. A power that has been used countless times. Ah, uh, yes, a report from the provinces. You are, his eyes flick from, for an instant to a scroll in his lap. Sahara. You witnessed a new attack in the contested lands. Tell me all. First, there is something I need to know. Why would I need to know anything? No, I'm going to give my report. Redbeard listens to your entire harrowing tale with careful attention. He nods frequently, though he takes no notes. As he ponders your report, you get a better look at him. He is a massive man, over six feet tall and broad of shoulder. The hair and beard that are his namesake are, as expected, bushy and fiery red. The strangest thing is his mood. Despite the chaos inside and outside his fort, he seems strangely jolly when he talks to you. Interesting, worrying, and based on your observation, how serious was this attack? Very serious. It requires immediate attention. Who am I to say? Mm, but I think it is serious. You've got titans m running around. The rebels working with humanoids, perhaps with other forces involved? I should say it is serious. The rebels working with humanoids, perhaps with other forces involved? I would say it is serious. The first attack was a disorganized, feeble thing. It will not stay that way. Is there anything else you want me, want me to know about the attack? We lost a scout who was traveling with the name of Rainer. I am sympathetic. I remember being able to make attachments of people. However, he grows thoughtful. If you wanted to find what happened to the scout, perhaps I could give you enough power to make this possible. Yes, I really would like to know what happened to Rainer, especially since that Titan, Croas, kind of made a reference to a surprise about him. Commander Odile of Rock Ridge Keep constantly criticizes Abaddon. I hate to be a tattletale. Are we tattling? Hmm. I am aware of that, of course. I do not act against anyone who merely speaks against us. It is political, politically unwise. Well, all right, that is all. I thank you on behalf of the pact. You have shown quite a bit of skill getting here. Courage, ingenuity, Yes, you do need to return to your post in the contested lands. I thought I might find a place here. Redbeard laughs with genuine pleasure. 
I love it when a young person sees an opportunity and leaps on it with vigor. Now you will see if your skills can match your ambition. Sahara, I will offer you the rarest of honors. You are going to be a hand of Abaddon. <laughs> Um, do I deserve this honor? Of course I do. I just fought on my way here. I want to be a hand. I accept the honor. Your enthusiasm is noted. I only hope that you want to become a hand for, shall we say, righteous reasons? There is only one more bit of business. And what is that? He stands up straight and adopts an air of amused self-righteousness. I, Redbeard, keeper, keeper of Abaddon and defender of the pact, offer you the honor of being a hand of the Black Fortress. Do you swear to obey our orders and give all of the safety and security of the pact? All, for, yes, I do so swear. I do so swear. Redbeard nods. And for just a moment, he looks old and tired again. Good to hear it. And after all of the oath breakers we have suffered, I hope to find one who truly means it. Now I have a question for you. Sure, what is it? Some are chosen to serve the pact, though they have very different ways to do it. Some serve me, some oppose me. But service is never the only reason, not with so much wealth and power available, eh? So tell me, and I assure you I have heard everything. What do you want here? I want the glory of battle. Wealth and power sounds good. This is something they asked us in the first one, too. What do you want to be a hand? I only want to serve the pact. Of course, we uphold from the provinces a creature of pure, un diluted duty. We get those from time to time. It never lasts. There will be plenty of temptations. I suggest you decide which one to succumb to first. I suppose then that is all I must that is I suppose then that is all. I must return to work. Wait, there is something I need to know. Red beer size. Curiosity. Inquisitiveness. Those are such a trial. Come talk to me from time to time. You have promised so I will guide you. Where should I go then? Back to heart protest, and quickly, he will be your guide. Report to him for orders. He places his hand on your shoulder. Sahara, this is a dark time. Join me, fight for our people. He points at the two, I got an award over here. He points at the two tombs in the corners of the room. Also, there are two foes I have a particular interest in hunting down. Miranda, yeah, Miranda, and, and Dylas. These books describe them. It is unlikely you will meet them, but if you do, you should be prepared. Then one of the hearts comes in, her arms full of maps and scrolls, and he returns to work. As you leave the room, you look back. Redbeard's strength has already faded, and he looks weary and tired once again. I can't help but feel sorry for him. Okay, here's the other book. I did one already. This book is about report, Miranda. Okay, so I need to report to Polis. I know I can't go anywhere up here too much. So now I am a hand. This is a small gymnasium. Here, Redbeard can exercise, practice with, practice with his blade, and keep himself in the sort of shape he needs to be in to, t to fend off assassins. Being invited to train here with him is probably a great honor, and a dangerous one. They let me in here, though. Okay. Oh, but that's knocked me out. That's gated off, which it was before. And I don't want to go pilfering through his stuff. I'm sorry. Okay, so, and I think there was a library over here last time. I wonder if that library is still over here. Now I can talk to... Is this the library? Still under construction. Yep. Any triggers? That's barred off. Yeah, they kind of changed this around. Okay. 
Who's that? Heart something. Come here. I don't need to talk to you. Heart Hannah. One of Redbeard's hearts is patrolling this, his tower. She walks through the corridors, looking through windows and taking notes. She occasionally records the location of a bit of dirty floor so that some poor servant can be shouted at later. She, notice, she notices you as, you as she walks by. Are you allowed to be here? Oh, wait. She cracks his scroll. You are Sahara. Yes, you can be here. I am Heart Hannah. I offer you a late welcome to Avedon. You are Heart of Avedon? That is my honor. Redbeard brought me here from the Kaaba. Asked for me personally. My family has some prestige in the Kaaba, and so we are expected to send many to serve. What did you do in the Kaaba? I was an inquisitor. I sought those who violated the stone code. A harsh life. I made many hard decisions. This, appeared, this appealed to Redbeard. How did Redbeard hear about you? His hands, eyes, and hearts are always looking for talented souls to bring to the Black Fortress, either voluntarily or by conscription. Which doesn't seem right, but hmm. Of course, I choose to come here enthusiastically. Tell me about your family. We have wealth and position. In the Kaaba, however, such privileges are paid for with service. It is a vital part of our honor. Our laws, our laws are harsh but wise. What sort of service? Military, legal, charity, one measure of a family's value is how many of its children serve the people and the pact. By being here, I serve the pact in my family's prestige at the same time. It is satisfying. But then there can be problems, such as when two sisters from the same family find themselves in opposition. Sisters? Oh, I feel a quest coming on. You might as well hear the gossip from me. My sister is here, Envoy Duran. She sent sent by Hanbar's council to examine Abaddon. If you have time, I might briefly discuss her with you. What are you doing? Redbeard has given me one job. Use the keen eye of an inquisitor of the Kava to examine Abaddon. Look for flaws in our defenses. Ways to save money. Places where we are weak. Where do you look? Everywhere. There is not one inch of Abaddon that is not open to me. Well, I haven't been in the deep dungeons for a while. Security pro problems. Everywhere else is subject to my judgment. How does the rest of Abaddon feel about you? Considering that my main purpose is to judge them and give them more work, I am not popular. I do not care. My duty is more important than their opinions. I'd like to know more about Redbeard. It is not wise to gossip about the Keeper. Many think that the Keeper is overtired. I do not agree. He is a human, after all, and the stresses on him are great. Tell me about your sister. Her name is Envoy Duran. She is here to explore Abaddon, learn more about its chambers, its needs, and capabilities. She wants hands to give her information about the tower. She is in the damper regions of the storerooms under the kitchens. The storerooms? Oh yes, it is miserable for her. Encourages her to leave, we hope. <laughs> she gives you a wicked grin. I think of it as revenge for the endless teasing I endured from her as a child. What should be done about her? Actually, I was hoping that you would help her. It would show Hanbar's counsel that we are trustworthy and would get rid of her sooner. Okay, so I'd have a quest then. Would it come up? Didn't come up. Hmm. Why not? That seems odd. Sound like a quest to me. Maybe later on. There's an Eye of Abaddon. Oop, here's another book. This book is about Redbeard. Okay. And another one over here. This book is about the keepers of Abaddon. I suppose I should go down and talk to Poultice. These are eyes. Redbeard's tower is busy with eyes and hearts. They are gathering and processing huge piles of information about the situation in Abaddon, about events in the Pact, and about what is happening in the Farlands. You try to talk to them and tap into the deep wellsprings of knowledge they have gathered, and you have no luck. When you try to ask questions, they immediately shut you down. You will learn what is happening from your superiors and nobody else. Okay. Time to go back to the stairs. Here we go. 
So where was, oh, that's right. I have to go find. All right, and where was he at? Heart pull his office, okay. Coming up on an hour or two, so we'll talk to him and then we're done. Okay. You return to speak with Hart Pro Pro Protest. He is still working through the piles of reports and orders on his desk. In the pact, the more influential, influential you are, the more paper they give you to poke at. The heart nods to you. What do you need of me, Han Sahara? Speak quickly. I would like to know more about you. No, Redbeard has made me a hand. You are to send me back to the Contesta lands. Of course, Redbeard sent word of your new job. Congratulations. Before I send you back, however, I want to give you the resources of Abaddon so that you do not suffer the fate of so many hands before you. You have met Kaleida, Yannick, Yosheta, and Detrick. They are available to aid you when you return. I recommend that you do not return to the war zone alone. There is also a tinker mage who might be helpful to you. His name is Alcander. Go introduce yourself to him. Ah, then that reminds me, unexpected honors are being held are being heaped up on you today. He takes your yellow crystal and replaces it with a blue one. This will greatly expand how much of the black fortress you can explore. How will they aid me? For most missions, when you depart, you may take two of them with you. Your choice. Most hands, when on missions, travel in groups of three. The others will train and work on other tasks in your absence. Are my companions in the black fortress now? He consults his a roster. They are. While you are in Abaddon, you can speak with them. They may help learn things that will help you. Tell me about Alcander. He frowns. He is from my homeland of Duram, but he does not share my helpful dispositions. A skilled tinker mage, but difficult. Go west from here, and you will find him in the main storerooms. It's a note on your map. Okay. That is all I need. All right. And I wish you good hunting. So, what do I have? New a new hand. See, it's not showing up. One of these quests are coming up. The red beard has made you a hand at Abaddon. Before you can begin your work, you need to learn about some of the power Abaddon makes available to you. The fifth hand that can aid you is named Alkinder. Go meet him. He is working in the storerooms in the southwest corner of Abaddon. So that's my next question. So we are done for now. Signing off.